guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Happy to have you here. Hopefully this video finds you all doing well. If not, send us some positive vibes your way today. I just got done finishing a Netflix documentary on D.B. Cooper. Pretty good stuff. Check it out. You know the guy who hijacked a plane back in 1971. They never found him. He took away, parachuted out with the money. Pretty interesting docu-series. I, I was familiar with the story, but it shed some light on some new, I guess, elements that you guys might be interested in if that's your if that's your thing, if that's your jam. So today we're going to talk about, I hopefully, it's everybody's jam to get free amazing champions for free inside the campaign. Uh, it's been a long time since we talked about campaign farmable champions. And uh, really, I think every player, especially starting this game out, should invest in all of these champions, at least to level 50, because they can help you out tremendously in fact wars if not on your main kind of dungeon teams uh and i thought we would update this list because the last time i did it man i snubbed a couple champions who now i use quite a bit if i look at all the names on this list here in the background i have maxed out every single one of these champions and i use pretty much every single one of these champions still to this day even though i am well into the end game been playing for over three years now so anyway without further ado let's start out i'm going to tell you guys excuse me if i can speak how to build these champions too uh let's start with valerie so valerie's a support champion you can pick her up in the first stage and uh she's great she has a uh swing ability wow i mean <laughs> What a great ability, guys! Swing! That's very descriptive. Okay, her A1's nothing to write home about here. But her A2 is on a three-turn cooldown when you book it out here. And you shouldn't use your rare books on all these champions. You should probably, if you are going to be farming the campaign anyway, you should probably just try to farm a dupe of them and then use the dupes as books and save your rare books for non-campaign uh, farmable champions. Increase the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn. Decrease the duration of all debuffs on all allies by one turn. Place an increase attack on all allies for two turns. This ability is really, really good. A lot of new players don't recognize how good this ability is. Increased duration of buffs is tremendous. You also have increased attack. It's not the big version, but it's still great to have, especially if you don't have another increased attack champion on your team. What's more is she has a shield, albeit on a five turn cooldown, but a pretty decent shield based on her level. So uh, interesting. It also heals each ally according to the number of buffs they are currently under. So pretty cool champion. Definitely a very viable support champion, if nothing else than for Bannerlord's Faction Wars. Uh, we want to have her fast if we can, right? Because buffers in this game, especially increase the duration of all buffs and decrease the duration of all debuffs uh, by one turn. Sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes one turn will remove the debuff. Uh, you want those champions generally to be a little bit faster. That way you can keep up with the cooldowns of those buffs on the other abilities. Other than that, guys, I mean... <laughs> The shield is dependent on level, so really, you're not trying to get a lot of damage. You don't have to build a lot of attack or crit rate or crit damage on this champion. She's a support, so you want to build her so she can stay alive, right? So build her fast. You don't need any accuracy on her uh, either. Uh, she's only, uh, t you know, touching your allies, not the enemies. So you can build her with a lot of defense, a lot of HP, and a lot of speed. Uh, next up, so fairly easy champion to build. Now we're going to go all the way to stage four here in Durham for uh, Forest. And we're going to start out with Spirit Host. So Spirit Host, you can utilize on her A1. She has a heal, 50% damage inflicted, whatever. Increase attack, big version on all allies on a three-turn cooldown. That's great. And then on the A3, we have a cleanse and a block debust for one turn. Now, this Dark Gift ability is another one of those abilities that I remember me back in the day. At least I can only speak for myself here, right? I didn't value this as how good it is, right? So, yeah, train me for. Well, a couple picks couple picks I'm gonna kill you you can use her in the early game in the arena and what you do is you build her in immunity gear and then she comes in and whoever else on your team gets provoked gets any debuffs essentially she'll come in with immunity gear she will not be you know uh, crowd controlled CC herself and she comes in there, cleanses the rest of the team. That's why building her with either high resist, if you don't have any immunity gear yet, or immunity is going to be the best bet for her. And again, similar to uh, Valerie, we don't care necessarily about damage on this champion. So you should not be building her, you know, to really uh, get a ton of crit rate, crit damage. A little bit of crit rate is nice because you get the heal on the A1, but trust me, the heal is not really the highlight of her kit, right? You're going to be relying on other champions to keep her alive for the most part uh, anyway. And that increased attack is going to 
be really nice for the arena. To me, she's definitely an arena type champion. However, you can definitely use her in other areas of the game too. She has a speed in all battles by 10% aura, which is actually pretty solid. And she doesn't need accuracy either, guys. But fast speed is going to be great. Also, right here, Greybeard. Greybeard's a little bit tougher to build, but I love this champion. Let's start with his aura. So his aura is increased ally defense and dungeons by 30%. That is one of the better auras out there in dungeons. Forget about just rare champions. I'm talking rare and epic and legendary champions. There's not that many that are better than that. Only a few come to mind, Norag uh, being one of them. But ally defense and dungeons by 30% is tremendous. It's going to help you a lot with progression in your traditional dungeons. It's Ice Golem, Fire Knight, uh, Spider, Dragon, stuff like that, right? Uh, in all the keeps. We also have an AoE Freeze. Not bad, a 40% freeze on a three turn cooldown when booked. That is really, really good, guys. Especially for a rare champion. His damage is based on defense, so he's easy to keep alive as well compared to the other two champions that we've shared so far. And he has a provoke on his A1. So he has counterattack on himself, which is going to lead him to be doing more crowd control with his A1 every single time he's hit. He's going to have a 70% chance, which is a very high provoke land rate on your A1. Could even help you out in early stages against the Magma Dragon as your main provoker. I'll tell you what, guys, Greybeard is a really really solid champion. However, you do need to build him with accuracy. He does have fairly low base speed. So stat priorities, I would start with accuracy to land these freezes and the provokes, and then add a little bit of speed and try to get his crit rate uh, close to 100 because you can put out some decent damage for a defense-based champion. All right, next up is going to be all the way in stage six, and that is going to be Eris. So she's the one I snubbed. And some of my viewers will, will know that uh, I didn't realize that she was a campaign farmable, and I opened a bunch of uh, shards, hoping to get my hands on this champion. The good news is I did. Eris! Eris! We got her, guys! The bad news is I could've just went right into uh, the campaign and got her that way. Bro, bro! She's available! She's available in campaign! Oh man, we all make mistakes, I guess, right? Bullseye, whatever. But the A2, check this out. Removes one random debuff from all allies, and then has 100% chance of placing increased speed on allies for two turns, is on a three turn cooldown. Step aside, Apothecary. Step, Step aside, Eris is a. But that doesn't make any sense. I shouldn't even compare to Apothecary, one of the other better rares, not campaign farmable out there in the game. But the cool thing about her is she's not as good as a, a speed booster, right? She doesn't have that turn meter boost as a, compared to somebody like Apothecary or Hykatoon. However, she has the big version of increased speed on three turn cooldown with a mini cleanse. Remove one random debuff from all allies. That is enough to remove stun from the clan boss. She is on my main clan boss team, I use Eris, you know? She's that good. Counterattacks the attacker when an ally is attacked as well. So really cool, she's gonna be doing a lot of A1s. When you build her for clan boss, you do wanna try to get to 100% uh, crit rate because you can get a lot of damage out of all those counterattacks off of the Avenger passive, okay? Uh, she also has speed and dungeons by 16%. So yeah, Eris is really, really good as well. Let's go ahead and head over to stage eight here, guys. Go to one of the, uh, wait, 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 am I in, am I in, uh, stage nine, the Dreadlands, Ash. Here we go, this looks better. War Maiden, I mean, most people in the game, if you're brand new, you probably don't, but most people who have been playing for any amount of time know War Maiden. She is the best decreased defense champion out of all the rare champions inside the game because she has it on a three turn cooldown when you book it out, uh, decreased defense, the big version. That is great. She can also dish out some damage. You know, she left her clothes at home, but who cares? I mean, I'm not complaining, are you? Uh <laughs> What's up? What's up, War Maiden? I, I, uh, we are dead. Oh, sorry. Run. I get what you love! She can put out a lot of damage too, guys. You need to build her with accuracy and then try to get some damage out of her. Don't be afraid on any of these attack, even your nukers, especially for uh, dungeons. Don't be afraid to put them in uh, HP percentage or defense percentage on their chest piece or even in their accessories. I, I feel like a common mistake uh, a lot of new players is building out their champions to be so strong on the attack, on the offensive, and then they just die. You need them to stay alive, ultimately, to win the match, to win the battle in Raid Shadow Legends. So War Maiden's fantastic for the arena. You need to build her with a lot of accuracy, uh, and then we can prioritize, you know, enough health to keep her alive. And then speed, 
excuse me, and then get a little choked up when I talk about Warman, <laughs> and then speed, and then we want to build her with, uh, obviously, crit rate as well, and a little bit of crit damage. She can definitely put out some damage uh, uh, for a debuffer. Very good champion. Uh, next, I want to spotlight honorable mention to Berserker. We don't have him on the list, but he does have a double hitter with some ignore defense on a four-turn cooldown, so not a bad champion to take to level 50 if you're looking for a damage dealer, maybe in the Barbarian faction uh, for Faction Wars, but not on the list officially. You want to build him out with, uh, you can put a stun set on him for control you can build him with 100 crit rate and some crit damage as well uh but i wanted to call out two other champions i wanted to call out one other champion shield guard i actually like shield guard better than berserker he's an uncommon champion in the game and man this guy is a machine right he has an aoe attack fills his champion's turn meter by 20 percent on each critical hit the cool thing about this he's a defense-based champion easy to keep alive he's an uncommon freaking champion right and it's on a two-turn cooldown he can use this ability every other turn. So he's dishing out decreased speed based on defense on his A1. He comes in with the A2, and he's filling his turn here by 20% for on each critical hit. You need to have him with 100% crit rate, 100% crit rate, and then prioritize some defense, a little bit of crit damage, and you are good to go. Removes one debuff from the start of the champion at the start of each turn as well. Uh, this guy's really good, especially against like Ice Golem. He can just dish out tremendous amount of damage. Two turn cooldown, and he's filling his turn meter by 20%. He's like the Energizer Bunny. He keeps going and going and going. Big fan, can you tell of Shield Guard? Armager, too, is a champion that all of you guys should invest in. Uh, he's not campaign farmable, but you can just pull your mystery shards until you get him. You'll definitely want to keep your hands on Armager. Uh, one of the top three, well, the best uh, uncommon champion in the game. The other one, the other one of the top three uncommon champions is actually in stage 10, and this is Saurus. So Saurus, is a dude who you can take to level 50 or level 60 and be your campaign farmer. He's going to be a lot faster than any of the starting champions in the game. The nice thing is, and the very important thing when building Saurus is this. He has an AoE on his A1. He has an AoE on his A2, right? So all he's doing is AoE attacks. If you don't have a champion like Bellower, Saurus is going to be your best friend or Fellhound. Saurus is going to be your best friend, right? So what you can do with Saurus is you build him slow, right? We don't need to have him very fast. We built him over, I think, 103 speed. Whatever speed Lord Shazar is, we build him one speed higher, and that's it. Which means you don't want to be putting attack, or excuse me, speed boots on your campaign farmer. You want to be building them all out nuke. Unlike what we were talking about before, we don't need to keep these champions alive because they're never going to be attacked if they do their job correctly, right? So we want to build them all out nuke. That means we're prioritizing attack, not speed. We don't care about speed. Put attack percentage on his boots. Put crit damage on the gauntlets and look for crit rate on their substats everywhere else. That's the most important thing when you build this champion. You can get a lot of extra attack and be able to kill everybody in one shot. Again, when you prioritize your boots on your campaign farmer to be attack percentage. All right, next up is going to be... This is one of my faves, man. Not enough people give credit to Executioner. Executioner is a really, really cool champion, guys. Uh, he has an AoE attack. Well, his A1 has a stun on it. Not too bad, right? Let's say a 30% stun on an A1 isn't too bad. He has an AoE, decrease the turn meter by 20%. Has a 50, make it 75% chance of placing decreased speed for two turns. Uh, it scales off of attack and defense, which is kind of awkward, but it's okay. It's still a great ability. This is a great control ability, meaning that we have turn meter control and decreased speed in the same ability on a three turn cooldown. That's fantastic. He also has increased defense and counterattack on this champion, the big version. Uh, and that is on a five turn cooldown on his A3 ability. So leading to more stuns off of his A1. Uh, defense in all battles by 17%, meaning not just dungeons. You can use him anywhere in the game as a defensive or elite. I think that Executioner, again, especially in Faction Wars, can help a lot of players out. This Tumult, this A2 ability, is really, really good. You do need a lot of accuracy on this champion, so prioritize accuracy. Prioritize a little bit of speed. And hey, if you want some damage, go ahead and put some crit rate on him as well. And then last but not least is going to be one of my faves out of the entire video. It's Diabolist. Diabolist is a very fast champion. She's a 110 base speed when she is uh, fully uh, 6 star. 110 base speed, very fast fast champion. She's all about the speed. She has an AoE with increased speed on all allies on a three turn cooldown. Great ability here. She can dish out a little bit of damage as well. And then this positive charge is another great control ability. Fills a, a turn meter of all allies by 15%. Decreased turn meter of all enemies by 15% on a four turn cooldown. Doesn't sound like much, but it's great, right? Between this 
uh, affecting the the uh, the terminators of allies and enemies. And then this with the AOE with increased speed. She's a really, really sneaky good champion as a control element to any of your dungeon teams. So don't sleep on Diabolus. Build her fast and with accuracy. And if you can afford to do so, build her with some crit rate as well because she can dish out a decent amount of damage throughout the longer duration battles. Guys, there it is. Those are, I think, nine champions we covered, nine or ten champions that we covered that are my favorite campaign farmable champions. Really, everybody, I think, should be justified taking them to level 50 at the very least to help them out in Faction Wars. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.